Okay, so this is part two. We talk about the Gemara, which the three oaths. What are the big three? Not to rebel against the nations, not to make forceful aliyah, and not to be punished too much by the Goyim. So, number one is, we need to discuss whether these are connected or not, is once the nations give permission, the oaths do not apply. Okay, so I'm going to turn around the screen a second so you can actually see who we're talking about. This is the Satma Rebbe. Sorry, if we know him, we can kill him. No, I didn't say Satma Rebbe. I'm sorry, I can't do it completely. Okay, that's the Satma Rebbe. Okay. Okay, so he says like this. There are fools that say he died in uh, 79. He was born in 87, 1887. Yeah. How old is he? Don't know, they had a fight. <laughs> There's two. They um, in, fought, fought over the inheritance. So in America, there's Kirat Yarl and Williamsburg. Kirat Yarl is now called pa Palm Tree. Um, Palm Tree City or something. Right. Because pa title bound means date tree. So they're very clever. They made it. Where's Kirat Yarl? Kirat Yarl and I think there's Kirat Yarl in Israel as well. But there's, a, there's a, a two towns in... There's Williamsburg is a... Is in New York. Right. It's got fifty something percent um, Hasidim. Most of them are um, Samer. And Kirtyo or Williams and Kirtyo was somewhere else, a bit further away on the east coast, or close to the east coast of America. And one of them had seventy percent below the poverty line. Now it's better. Now it's only fifty. Unimproved. No, they all the government. What? They, the they do indeed. Okay, I'm not going to defend them. I'm saying that that's what they. Well, that's what they. Um. Oh. In any case, so he says the fools that say. This is how he refers to people who disagree with them. There are fools that say that since the majority of nations agreed to establishment of the state, now a prime R C S A for sure on um, Zionism or give a short sheer What's he referring to? The majority of nations agreed to establishment of the state. When did this happen? He says there are fools that say that since the majority of nations agreed to the establishment of the state, there are no there are no longer remains neither prohibition breaking the oaths or transgression of the oaths by hurrying the end. Okay, so he says the nations agreed for a state. When did the nations agree for a state? <laughs> what? 1948. Who? When? The UN. The UN. UN. Uh, okay, there was something um, 20 years before that. No, before the no, the that was that. That was only a British White declaration. Paper. World War One. White Paper was also British. What preceded the UN, and which was considered a a complete failure? NATO. Was it NATO? NATO is the NATO was the after the so, no before the UN. What was the organization? NATO League of Nations. Okay, the League of Nations came together and made the San Remo in the San Remo conference. I made all these different declarations. One of them was that Israel needs a state. So then we had it twice. Okay, so he says, Han? the Jews are allowed to stay. So that was what was declared, okay? Now, he says, those people were saying that just because the nation said we can have a state, which means we can ignore the Gemara, no, they're wrong. The darkness, and this is how he explains that people think like that, the darkness and blindness of sight that have become so strong in the world have caused people to give credence to these basis words. He thinks, anyone who thinks the nation's deciding us, uh, to allow us to return means that we can return is by basis, makes us stupid, we are fools, okay, by thinking that. He now has to answer to the fact that we're going to see five different people who are huge gedolim who completely disagree with that, okay? And so, according to him, they will be fools. So first, I've, done, I've, um, I've gone a little bit into what Ephraim asked, and if Nathan was here, he'd be able to enjoy it as well because he asked for sure him on history. I'm um, going to give you a little bit of a history lesson on each rabbi as we see him. So you may have heard this rabbi. Unfortunately, this year, everyone's Ashkenazi, but that's just, that just happens to be. So this is Rav, the Marasha, okay? The Marasha was alive from 1553 to 1631 in Poland. He has, he, his nickname was Idols because his, his uh, mother-in-law was named Idols. And his mother-in-law was, mother was so nice to him that he called her his second mother. And he started being given the nickname of his mother-in-law. Okay? Like, I don't know, you, you don't have mother-in-laws yet. He's got soon. 
But when it's like you have been given the nickname of your mother-in-law, basically his mother-in-law, who is a widower, a widow, sorry, a widow, basically supported him financially. He, 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 uh, she supported him all his life financially, and that's why people start giving him the nickname of his uh, mother-in-law. And also, he was very known for um, being very uh, generous with charity, and he had written on his door. Obviously, this is not it's not in Photoshop, but I've written it just. Uh, to, show, to remind myself what to speak about, is a passage from Eov. I will open my door to um, the poor, to the visitors. He had that written on his door. So everyone know that he's um, willing to do Hachanasa Ochim. Now, what's Hachanasa Ochim? What does that mean? Okay, so halakhically, real Hachanasa Ochim, when I invite you over Friday night, that's not real Hachanasa Ochim. Real Hachanas Orochim is when someone literally doesn't have anywhere to go, that's Hachanas Orochim. You want to host people for Shabbat? Fine. That isn't necessarily the Mitzvah Hachanas Orochim. It's nice to do, but it's not the Mitzvah Hachanas Orochim. So what did he say? The Marasha wrote a book called uh, On a Gadata, on stories, and he says this. Okay, so he explains this in the Gemara over there in Ketubot. People using their time back in the Kenya used to. The meaning of not going up to Israel as a wall should not be understood as forbidding indi- indi- individuals from moving to Israel. Rather, individuals are indeed permitted to move to the land of Israel. The prohibition of that they shouldn't go up forcibly forbids the nation of Israel from returning to Israel against the will of the nations, are building the walls of Yushalayim. Okay? That means once we have permission, are we allowed to or not allowed to? Yeah. Now, you could claim that it's not fair League of Nations. Why? The League of Nations is represented by Britain, and British Empire controlled almost half the world. So India wasn't actually given a a voice, democratically at least. It was just under British control, but control is control, so probably it still applies. The proof, okay. Nehemiah, who is Nehemiah in the Tanakh? Um, He was one of the prophets, no? Yeah, but what, what was his job? What was he famous for doing? I don't remember. Any Why? Who else? Who? Who else's name is always set together with Nehemiah from the Tanakh? Oh, okay. This, this is from. This is from the first um, exile. Ezra. Ezra Nehemiah. Oh, All right, right. First temple, second temple. What? What did Ezra Nehemiah do? They, they were what do you call it? They were like the advisors to the king, you know? Huh? They were like the advisors to the king. Yeah, but what do they do? What, what do they do? What are they famous for? Seven years. Bringing the Jews back to Israel after the destruction of the first right. temple. Okay, Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Yerushalayim. Shlomo, who's first, Nehemiah or Shlomo Melech? Shlomo. Shlomo Melech was in the first temple. Okay, Shlomo Melech is the one who wrote Shir Hashirim. So even in the time of Nehemiah, the oaths about returning too soon also apply. So what, Nehemiah is going back without permission? Is he is he transgressing Shir Shir? Gemara says you're not allowed to go back without God's permission. Nechem is going back. How is he going back? With God's permission. Okay, and Nechem who indeed rebuilt the walls of Yushayim, as it says, let us build the walls of the city of Yushayim, so we no longer be a source of humiliation, was given permission of the king. Okay? We didn't have permission to move back. Yes, we did. We had to, one second. Dayavesh gave permission for the Jews to return, and also the king's words, as he said to me. What? What are you asking? We then? didn't get permission this time. Who I says mean, we didn't? Put me off. Huh? I wanted to put me off. We talked about UN and the League of Nations. But no, it's not a temple. Neither was it then. It was Dayavesh. Right, so they didn't agree. No, because the, 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 we're learning from this. The Marashah thinks you don't need God's permission. It, the, 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 the giving of non-Jewish permission is God's permission. That's what the Gemara says. It says, don't rebel against Goyim. If you're not rebe- what does it mean, don't rebel against them? If they give you permission, is it considered rebelling? No. No, yeah, fair. And if you don't go, then it is. It, and if you don't go, it is rebelling? What do you mean? Like, they give you permission to move back here. Yeah. It's a big chilo, Hashem. That, that's, I mean, that's not what you're saying. But when, once we're given permission, thousand years Jews have been waiting to come back, and now we've given permission, and so many people aren't interested. Right. No, not. And we're not talking about people with hardships. I'm not trying to talk down about people with hardships. Yeah, but- but, and everyone has their reasons, but many people, Baruch Hashem, have been blessed financially Amen to that. with the ability to make it. Yes, make Aliyah, and they're not willing to. And okay, it'll hurt my business, okay, but you have something left over, right? Okay, if, if I know there are some 
half Svadim here or full Svadim here who know what happened to Svadim. Svadim were basically, when they made Aliyah, they were thrown into tents. They were treated very, very badly, but they still made it. What, what are you asking, Jenny? Uh, they didn't have anything in the first place. That's not true. It really isn't true. The North African Jews were, were, were wealthy. They weren't poverty stricken. Neither were the uh, Taimani. They, they weren't. The Persians. They lost everything. The Persians weren't either. Okay. They were because they had to give up. They, why did they come here for? So my father's first wife was, uh, is, she still is, is Turkish. Her Wait. father, when he wanted to leave Turkey, was forced, he had a hotel, was forced to give it away. That's why they all left poor, not because they were poor to begin with, they were poor because they were forced to give everything away. Okay? Um, and in turn, this explains why Tuvia, who's an uh, individual there who makes fun of Nehemia, ridicules Nehemia by saying, what is this thing that you were doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Implying, if you, you shouldn't be doing this, why? Because you're rebelling against the king. If you have permission from the king, though, it's going to be allowed. Meaning they were not aware of the permission given by the king that enabled the return to Israel and the building of the land. This, the meaning of the prohibition from rebelling against the non-Jews, prohibits actions in exile other than building walls. We're allowed to defend ourselves, but we're not allowed to actively come back. Unless what? We have permission. We have permission. So, <coughs> the Satmar Rebbe, who lived 500 years after, after the Marasha, 400 years after the Marasha, is going to have to answer how the Marasha is in a fool. He's called anyone who called, says this a fool. Okay, now, next. Is the Socha Chava Rebbe, the Avram Bornstein. Okay. The Socha Chava. He wrote a book called the Avni Nezer, and uh, his father, uh, his son, wrote a, bo- uh, wrote a book called the um, Shemesh Shmo, a Hasidic book on the, the Tanakh. This is Poland, and the arrow is where he lives. He died in 1910. His his descendants were basically wiped out by the Holocaust as well. Poland, uh, almost all of them. Because they were out of Germany. Oh. Even though it was bad in Poland as well, at least they were allowed to live. In my opinion. I should, don't want to be giving money to, even though many of them, Pol, the Poland, the Polish have the highest amount of righteous among the nations. Righteous. Meaning the, Jew, the non-Jews who saved Jews during the Holocaust. No, the Dutch also have a huge amount. Who? The Dutch. Yeah, okay. However, however, the police work, um, police gave over all the papers and basically told everyone who, where the Jews are. So it's not all. And this is crazy. There's an article about this a few years ago. When the Jews came back from the camps, the survivors in, in um, Holland, they were charged municipal tax at the time they'd been away. How are they even supposed to pay that? They don't, don't care. This is the point. The, 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 the ridiculous is all right. In any case. Um, what is the thing we don't want here? Yeah, basically. Okay, so the Sokha Chavah Rebbe said this. If permission is given for all of Israel to return to the land, then it is no longer considered like going up as a wall because if permission is given, then it's similar to Bukhoma, a Rashi in a forceful, isn't given, sorry, isn't similar to Bukhoma, a Rashi in a forceful manner. If permission is given, it should be considered as an order to return. So you said, I can't remember what the word you used to describe people who don't go back. Once permission yeah, is given to the land of Israel, right. when permission is Very given, nice. Before you said donuts, you said rebellious, yeah, fair. So I'm going to go more with the rebellious. No offense to the donuts, I love donuts. Can I tell you a funny story about donuts? Yeah. Or- Oriya is seven, okay? Yeah. Oriya, my daughter. <laughs> when she was around two or three, when we were in Chicago, we were driving along a road in uh, Chicago called Devon, or by the Americans, they call it Devon, even though it's spelled oh. Devon, <laughs> the place in Britain. And Oriya, t- we were driving the car, and Oriya goes, Abba? What happens after we die? She's like two or three at this point. What answer oh, do no. I answer? <laughs> and I, I'm like, well, Oriya, you see, and then we drive past Dunkin' Donuts, which, if you have been in America, then there's a culture of Dunkin' Donuts, enjoy it. Great donuts. And she goes, oh, Dunkin' Donuts. And it completely went off topic. <laughs> and so Dunkin' Donuts saved me from having to answer three old. Never asked, asked that again. Should they have asked us? But, no, no, they have asked us, but when they're older, then it's a bit easier to. How old is she now? Like? She is now seven. Well, she has seven. How old is she when she was three? Oh, well. Yeah, she's three years old. 
Let's be good. Yeah. I was a bit slow. My parents thought I needed, uh, you know, I won't go into that. Thanks, Mamda. But clearly, the, okay, so he says, the Sokhacho Rabbi says, once you're given permission, once, when there's no permission, it's like there's no mitzvah to live in the land. Once permission is given, it's like there's an order to, to, to return. Why? Because the mitzvah of living in the land is, again, relevant, because when considered that we are supposed to be living here. Now, he adds a big caveat to this, and we don't necessarily rule by this, but, but clearly, the only obligation one has to make Aliyah, once permission is given, is to let, settle in Israel within a group of God-fearing Jews. So the Sochcha Rabbi, who is a Haredi Rabbi, says, once permission is given, <coughs> you return. However, you need to return only with other religious Jews and live among other religious Jews, okay? Which obviously isn't so relevant today. And even in Keshet, there's a, a big spectrum. There are, there are religious, everyone's religious, but there are a few people who aren't, there's almost no way in Israel we're just religious. Bnei Brak. Bnei Brak has killed many people. Really? Not many. Not many. Oh. They need a Shabbos That's Yeah. Okay. So Rav Hirsch Kalasher died in 1874. He was best friends with the rabbi from Sarajevo, a Sephardi rabbi. And they where, where was he born? In uh, in Prussia, which is East Germany, which is today in East East Germany, which is today part of Poland. How long ago? 1874. Prussia. Died in 1874. He looks very. Uh, so, so one of his teachers. Bit Asian. Yeah. <laughs> one of his teachers who went around, not one of his, one of his Talmudim who went around teaching Zionism, was a rabbi in Herzl, uh, Theodore Herzl's village. So there are some people who suggest. The beginning of the Herzl's secular Zionism was from hearing lessons about Zionism from Rav Suyosh Kashir's Talmud, he was going around teaching about Zionism. Okay, it says like this. The oath is that we should not emigrate, la lot, to Israel. You know, this is it's very cool. What's, called, what's it called now? They changed the name of the immigration ministry in Israel. What's it called now? It used to be called Mr. Adalia. Yeah, fair. But there's now another name. It's now called Mr. Ha Hagira. Look, Hagira is immigration. Within it, within it, yeah, yeah, fair. It's from the same word. No, Hagira. Hey, Kimo Yudresha. Hagira. Hey, Kimo Yudresha. So, immigration. Israel. <laughs> Because we consider Israel the highest land of all the lands, even though it's not physically higher, it's in spirituality. When a Jew emigrates from one place to another, it's called Hagir, to emigrate. When he moves to Israel, it's Aliyah. So why do they change the name? Because some people get um, citizenship in Israel even if they're not Jewish, even if they don't get the right of return. That's why it's called. And, the, and the, also the Rashid Hagira deals with... Um, we start around, we around one second deals with visas and stuff. What? We're going to start around immigrants in this country that aren't Jewish. I can't hear you. If we start around immigrants in this country that aren't Jewish, it's going to affect the whole country and all the Jews. Okay. There are immigrants here. They are taking more money. They are coming. And, uh, there, aren't, there aren't that many. Like also, money. also, it's, it's a lot of it is spouses of Jewish people. What are you going to do? Break up family? Yeah, I'll call them. Probably. Probably. Okay. The oath is so that we should not emigrate to Israel forcefully to the walls of Jerusalem, as it is written in Gemara, Shelo Yalu Kachomot. And as Rashi explained, not to go forcefully and rebel against the non Jews. Rather, we should hope and await until Hashem has mercy on us. Why is it important that people like, um, what's his name? Ivanka Trump's husband? Kershaw. Why is it important that his, um, He's around. Yeah. Why is it important that he's around? Who? What's his name? Is is he he good? Good? He's a messenger for the Jews. Okay. So whether he's a good messenger or not, I'm not the one to judge. But when Jews are in power, when Jews are wealthy and in contact with kings and leaders, they have power. Uh, now you can say the Illuminati and all these conspiracy theories, which people last year love talking about. And the lizard people and all the straight up. That's what rubbish. Is, but I do believe that there are a group of people that run the world and we can't. They're not there. And they're in power. Yeah, like, what's his name? 
Okay. But he says that when he says because there are people like Montefiore and Rothschilds who are close now to the rulers because of their wealth, this is a time where it's not going to be like rebelling against the nations because what are they going to do? They're going to speak to the lead and say, pretty, pretty, please. Just like Mordechai did. Pretty, pretty, just like Moshe did. Pretty, pretty, please. Just Moshe had to use the templates to get us out. Right. We don't need to do that. Rather, we should hope on a way until Hashem has mercy on us. And at the time when Hashem finds favor with our actions, Hashem has made an oath with us not to be the one, not to, sorry, I'm reading from far, made an oath with us not to be one of those ascending against the desire of God. Now, Lapil, what are the Mapilim? Have I heard of this? This is Zionist history that you wanted to find. So, through this year, we are hearing a bit about Jewish history. What are the Mapilim? No, that's Mapilim. No, that's waterfall. Mapilim, I'll show you the spelling. That's the spelling. Mem, I am pay you, Lamed, you, Mem. Mapilim, you should have used that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who are the Mapilim? Who are the Mahapilim? The people like to pull over. No, it's with an I. Okay. Who are the Chalutzim? Chalutzim. Uh, guys, I called the group that I added you into the mini group for you guys coming back. Oh, pioneers. 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 Chalutzim are pioneers. Chalutzim pioneers. is also. The reverse is like that. All right. Uh, so the Chalutzim are pioneers. Mapilim is a similar word used. Again, for them, but the Mapilim are specifically the people who were involved with the illegal Aliyah under the British mandate. So we actually have a Shavua against being Mapil. However, there's a very, very cool thing. So Rabbi Dari was my rabbi in Hakotel. He passed away two years ago. Dari. Rabbi Dari, he was a Rosh Shiva. Where was he from? No, he was, um, he was born in Israel, but he's from Ashkenazi. Okay, so Rabbi Dari. Adari, uh, his, um, he gave a shiur. So basically, in old Tanakh, it has on the side when there's one word, and when there's a word which only appears once or twice, it will tell you where it appears another way. Kemapilim is a very um, unique and, uh, word. So when the Mapilim started doing illegal aliyah underneath the British, some Haredim want to bring evidence from this word that they're doing something wrong, because the Mapilim were the people who after the um, sin of the spies, we're told you can't make Aliyah, spies in the desert. And they tried to make Aliyah anyway, and the Canaanim came down and killed them. Okay? So they tried to bring evidence from this that the Mapilim are bad. However, in the other place in the Tanakh, it actually says Mapilim are good. So they shot themselves in the foot by trying to use Tanakh to prove themselves. Okay? So we should not be, Hashem made an oath that we shouldn't be those who are Mapilim. Ascending against the will of nations, the mountain forcefully. Rather, we should be one of those who satisfies the stones of the land. Lerotot, Avanair, and settle it. We shouldn't go at war. The first stage, when the Jews started coming back 200 years ago, how did they come back? Boats. I don't mean on, on what vessel did they come? Flying saucers. No, no, no. Guys, how did they come back? What did they do when they came? Uh, they worked it out. They kissed the ground and said, thank God. First people who came back. Tell me who the first people who came back were. What uh, type of people? Fresh uh, there were Sephardim as well, but the, between the Sephardim and the Ashkenazim, what type of people were they? Yeah, um, what they, they were like colonial. Village? No, not much not. The first people came back were religious. See them. The Talmudim were the Baal Shem Tov, and then the Talmudim Agra, and then also the Sephardim and the Yemenites live? came back, where they lived, Sfat, Tiberia, Yushalayim. And, and, and they came back, there. and they weren't fighting against the Goyim, they were coming back when they had permission and settling there. That's what you're allowed to do, to begin with. There's no great to admit to them doing these things. Who even be, begin to think that as Nehemiah stood before King Atachashasta, bit of a mouthful, and plead before him to allow the people of Israel to rebuild the ruins of Yushalayim, that he was transgressing the oath? You're allowed to ask. You're allowed to ask the nations to allow you to return, and you're allowed to settle the land. And once you're here, it's done. It's not considered rebellion. Once we're a majority, how's it rebelling anymore? We're a majority. Okay? Um, the people of Jews living in Israel when the world war was going on. Which world war? Like, yeah. yeah. There were 600,000 Jews at, in 1948. No, there weren't always. There were almost no Jews in Israel. Pardon? I didn't know when moved there earlier. Okay, so Germany declared itself, the Jews of Berlin said, you go, you, you go to the great Jerusalem, we'll stay in the small Jerusalem in Berlin. We saw what happened to the small Jerusalem. It was a story. Jews are happy. Why, why did your parents make Aliyah? Why take them so long? Do you know what I mean? Say. 
Why did your grandparents not make it out? Why did the Yemenites, many of them, go to London instead of coming straight to Israel? Oh, no, yeah, there's a lot of Yemenites in London. Yeah, the Adenis, because it was part of the British protectorate. Uh -huh. Oh, I told you, no? My, my great uncle was involved in getting them out. Who could have? My great uncle was involved in getting the Yemenites out. I've got, right, got a friend who's half, who's a quarter yeah. Adenite, quarter Scottish, quarter Polish. I hope he has no genetic problems because he shouldn't. No, he looks very funny. It's oh, best, it's best, <laughs> to, yeah. it's best to marry someone who's not um, genetically similar to you. No, proves the gene pool according to modern science. I'm not saying you should marry out. I'm just saying <laughs> open your. Um, marry a white blonde. They're saying you should marry him in, in America. You know. No, I'm not yeah. sure if the ge genet American Jews aren't that different from. Oh, okay, so we're English Jews. I was joking. Though. Wonderful. For Grazin, uh, uh, rather is seen as pleading before the king, and as such, God calls the king to favor the request of Nehemiah. The king agreed, and God's will was successful. So too, we hope will happen as, to us in our day. He's said, talking about a time before a Jewish state exists, and where he's hoping that the Jews will be able to what? Go, the powerful Jews will be able to go to the rulers and say, please give us a state. Yeah, give me a state, please. Okay. You know what? How do you, how... If there wasn't like a group uh, Illuminati, then how would Israel yeah, be brought? Yeah. Some random Jew, it doesn't matter how much money he has, comes to the, to the guys who control all of that and says, listen, I think that we should get a state for Jews. You need to have some sort of connections to be able to actually, first of all, start talking to them, and second of all, to get through. No, because you need one, one, one by one, one by one. You don't need that. Ah, I don't believe it. Okay, you. all right. So the next you. rabbi is Rav Meir Simchov Tvins. Okay, he's from Latvia in a place called Vinsk in Yiddish. Can't remember what it's called in Latvian. Latvia. Latvia. This is Lithuania. This is Estonia. This is Belarus. And this, sorry, this is Estonia. This is Russia. This is Belarus. This is Rav Meir Simchotvinsk wrote a book called the um, Mesh Chochma and the Or Sameach. Oh, wow, this is it's a big book. Why is it recording? What's that? Yes. Hi. Oh, yeah. oh, that's um, Estonia, and that's maybe one of the Scandinavian ones popping down. Okay, so what, look at this picture. What's that picture at the bottom? That's the statue, isn't it? Statue of, of, of the working. Jew. Working no. the, oh, no. the this picture is here just for me to remember the story about him. Okay, the, the picture of the story is of a guy, a, 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 um, a Dutch fable about... Um, Holland almost flooding, and one guy hanks something, puns something, I'm sorry, put his finger in the dam, and stopping a flood, the whole of Holland flooding by putting his finger in the dam. Okay, that's the... No. Why is it here? Because a similar thing happened to Rav Meir which is a true story, where they came into the shore in the middle of Davening saying the whole city's about to flood, the, um, the river's rising, and the ice is coming over, and it's going to destroy the whole city. So he went out of uh, uh, field at that point, stood at the side of the river with his talent and fillin, davened, and the river went down. Okay? And people were there to see it. Okay. So he says like this. However, in our days, the divine providence, we believe that God is behind everything. Right? We can't always explain how he's behind it and why he's behind it, but we believe he's behind everything. Uh, everything. However, in our days... The divine providence has caused the gathering of the enlightened governments in San Remo. So this is a bit offensive, but he's saying we don't care about what the unenlightened countries have to say. We care about what Western de democracies and big powers have to say. San Remo was the conference of the League of Nations, meaning we care about what America has to say. We care about what Western Europe has to say. And uh, what's going on in Africa, whatever the Africans think, they're not considered enlightened. That's what it sounds like. Which, enlightened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, not because they're black, because they didn't have modern government and they weren't independent and they weren't modern. And the uh, prime minister is a stupid person. But that's not what I'm saying at all, but okay. <laughs> They've been minging. Okay. Has that's caused the gathering person. of the enlightened governments in San Remo and the equation was made that the land of should be given to the nation of Israel. As such, the fear of the oaths have been removed. We do not need to be afraid from these. Um, Oaths. We need to realize that all the people we've seen so far think the oaths are real. These oaths about not rebelling and not making aliyah, but we're just not bound by them. And through the permission of non-Jewish king, the commander of the land has again become relevant. 
And just like you put on tzitzit hopefully in the morning, and put on tefillin in the morning, and say Kriyat Shema twice a day, if that's a mitzvah, then the mitzvah of settling the land has also returned as well. Since the, mag- since the mitzvah of settling the land has been reinstituted, reinstituted and is of equal value to all the other mitzvot in the Torah, there is a mitzvah upon there is a mitzvah upon everyone to aid to the best of their ability to enable the mitzvah to come to fruition. Now, the Midrash says, we know the Mishnah, which we say, I hope, every morning. Eyu Devar Shein Em Shir. Tamu Torah Keneged. Kulam. There's, however, another Midrash which says, Yeshuvah itself, Keneged Kulam. The Satan of the land of Israel is Keneged Kulam as well. That's in the Sifri. And I once told the Haredi guy that tomorrow, Two months ago, or two months later, I'm sorry, I saw him on the street. He was wearing a kippah suda. What, what happened? I don't know. You made him and that is what happened. I'm sure I didn't inspire life. him that much. Yeah. So, so, awesome. so we have to aid people because we realize, even if we're not making aliyah, we have to aid the others to do it. Okay? Because it's a uh, mitzvah. Why? You're not moving. No, because you may not actually be able to. You may not physically be able to. Okay, how do you spell historia in Hebrew? Okay. We talked about this before. Okay. Or historia. Historia. Both of us said historia. Okay. Rav Cook always used to write with a taf. Because it's like Torah, that's why. No, it's because of Hestel. <laughs> yeah, God is hidden in history. Modern Hebrew has been like that. <laughs> Right, in the Gemara, it tells us why the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed. The second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed because of... Very good. And the first was built, uh, destroyed because of... Or because we didn't make brachas on the Torah before learning. It was just um, just academic. Or because we um, killed and slept around and did Avad Zarah. Okay? Right? Megillo Eirat, Shemichudamim, and Avad Zarah. Yeah, Ooh. those are the big three cardinal sins. Okay, so since when have we stopped looking for meaning in historical things? Never. One second. If in the Kamara we look yeah. for reasons for historical things, why did we stop today? Should we continue? Well, um, you asked um, Yosef. You asked yeah, in Shir on Shabbat. How do you know that, why something has happened? And the answer is I don't. Should I, however, be still asking the question? Yes. Indeed. The difference, one of the differences between the Haredim and us is that we try and say God is behind things in almost everything. Yes. And therefore, no, even on Zionist things, they don't say oh, it's us being punished, brother, uh, or it's the Rashaim doing it. No, it's God's leading us. So Rav Kook, Rav Sfi, the Kook, Rav Kook's son says this. The Chomah Galutit, the foreign wall, the wall of the diaspora says, It's as if when the Goyim didn't allow us to return, it was like there was a Berlin wall surrounding our land. We weren't allowed to come. God has caused this wall to be destroyed. By the fact, how did God cause this imaginary wall to be destroyed? League of Nations. League of Nations, We believe that God has control. And even through something as huge as the League of Nations, has the ability to change us. Oh no. Look, this is, this is what they're doing to us, right? Thank you. Okay, we're continuing. Hufla is every day. Guys, one second. Can we do that after? We'll translate it after. Okay. So, when the League of Nations decided the land of Israel was for us, what was the in, in between stage? The League of Nations decided. First World War ends. Israel is taken away from the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and given to British. But it was called a mandate, Maybe. right? Lebanon, Syria were given to which country? England. France. France. Jordan, Iraq, and Israel were given to British. British as a mandate, which means they were supposed to protect it until whatever time they saw fit to give away their 
empire because effectively it was them just keep making the empire a bit bigger but calling it something different. So says Rav, uh, Rav Suyoda, this was all in preparation for us to return. Don't think it's just people doing things on their own with no knowledge. God is guiding them towards it. God is enabling you now to know 100% the oaths aren't relevant anymore. The goyim allowing the walls to be taken down. There is a wall stopping us from returning. The wall is, you cannot return. You cannot return because the goyim don't let you. As soon as the goyim let us, the walls crumbled. And who, who, who ordered that? The walls crumbled. God did by the order given by the nations the world. Okay, now this is quite a sad story. Um, okay, this is, okay, this is Rav Mir Yechiel Halevi Halestok from of Ostrovotsa. He's in Poland as well. Warsaw's up here, the capital, and this is where he was from. Um, he was a big Hasid, uh, and he had one son who was a Rebbe during the Second War, who had seven kids, and all seven kids and him were murdered. He has, no, he has almost no descendants. Why is he murdered? In the Holocaust? Sorry, I thought that was... Bro, it's crazy how small these bugs are. <laughs> There's bugs that fly on, on me, right? It's so small. No. Okay. My friend. I'll tell you this story, and then we'll actually learn what he says, and we'll finish with that. Be'ed kibush polin. I did Germania. The time of I didn't translate this into English because it would have not been as good as me translating it live. When Germany was um, conquering Poland in 1939, he was in Warsaw. This uh, the, the son of the rabbi that I just mentioned. His name is Ramey Chiel Halevi Halestock died naturally in 1928. His son became the rabbi after him, and the son was in Warsaw when. Okay, Germany baby. was being invaded. Uh, sorry, Poland was being invaded by Germany and Russia. And he was the Jews were kicked into the ghetto in um, in Warsaw, and his Hasidim somehow managed to return him to Ostrovotsa in a um, Red Cross vehicle. They managed to take him back to Ostrovotsa, where he's from, where he's the Rebbe. When the Germans started massacring them, he somehow came with a million of Jews, ten Jews to the um, tombstone of his father and put a piece of paper on it asking him to help them from the throne of God, the next throne of God, to bring Rachamim. Him and his chassidim collected all the Sifri Torah and buried them before the Nazis could burn them and damage them. Okay. He wouldn't work with a Yudin rat. Everyone know what, knows what the Yudin rat is? Yeah. It's the Jews um, who were... The Jews were basically asked by the by the Nazis to to run the local government and basically come up with lists of who to send away to the camps as well oh, when it was needed. Isn't that Gestapo? Or is that no, the Gestapo. No, the Gestapo. Oh, no, 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 Jews. No, no. Guys, you're funny history. Chasidav. So his Chasidim managed to um, take him to a place called Sandomaj, where his son was a rabbi there. Son of Yitzchak. And the um, wealthy people of the town managed to get no. the wealthy people of the town managed to get the bishop. Guys, the wealthy people of the town managed to get the bishop to agree to hide him and his son, and he refused. The rebbe refused because he didn't want to abandon his chassidim, so he refused to go into hiding. Um, so beforehand, before he was he escaped Ostrovotsa, they uh, tortured him and uh, forcibly ripped off his beard, oh. half his beard, um, hold him down. Um, in 1943, the Gestapo came and said, gave an order that if he wasn't handed over, 200 Jews would be burnt. So um, and a thousand more would be in danger. He said, better I be the korban, better I be the sacrifice, and not the 200 should be the sacrifice. He went to the mikvah, and in the morning he presented himself, he says, there's slichot and bidui, and prepared himself to die, Kiddush Hashem. 20 people offered to replace him. He was shot at the, um, basically as he came out of the Beit Knesset, after he prepared himself, to give himself over, and the 20 people who offered to um, replace him instead, 
were forced to um, dig um, his grave. grave, his grave, and then they were shot into the grave as well. Ooh. Okay. No, and he lost all seven sons, and that's when the, this dynasty, Hasid dynasty, uh, he had, no. And this, oh, why is it stop, stop. Well, it does have any sons. Okay, there are some descents through the grandfather, through this guy's father. Any, 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 he died in 1928, said this. Chazal say, Why? Chazal say, Shanoxrim yichbushu kodem agula, et el Yisrael, miyad, haishmeilim, behem yachziwa li Yisrael, kmo shara'inu, k'nikem atap azmanenu. Says, Meir yichir halevi halashtok of Ostrovotza. The Chazal already prophesies that the land of Israel would be conquered by the Muslims, and then conquered by the Christians, which it was by the British in the First World War, and only then would we take it from them, from the British. Why? <coughs> Why couldn't it just be direct from Muslims to, to Jews? It shows that they didn't want to. What merit do the Muslims have that Christians got? They have the fact that they worship one God. Okay, one. They have two, two more merits. They, you they, said that. What, they worship Marish, Muhammad the sallam, uh, they were they could be forgiven. So the first is that they don't worship Allah. Secondly, is they do a brit milah, even though they don't need to. But actually, there might be a source which says anyone born from Avram might need to do a brit milah, even Ishmael. And the third thing is, the Arabs have the schut of what? Living in the land of Israel. The Arabs who lived in Israel at the same time. They've been living here for centuries. Some of them are more recent, and yeah, you can say, no, you've only been here two generations more than us, and they came from Jordan. The point is, many of them do. So he says like this, <laughs> The Christians need to be in the middle. And not that the Jews take it from the Yishmaelim, the Arabs. First thing, they don't worship idols. They worship only one God. All the praises they make are to one God. And they daven a lot to God. And they also do a brit milah. No, there was one source which says anyone from anyone born of Avram needs to do a brit milah. <coughs> anyone from anyone born of Avram needs to do a brit milah. So all the other Arabish Semitic na nations around would take them to do a brit milah, even though it's not one of the seven mixed up in Enoch. Okay. We say, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, the Jews are a holy nation, but the Muslims aren't bad either. So you can't take it straight from them. There'd be a kitru, uh, accusation in Shemaim. Therefore, God caused it. The what? The, the Christians took it from the Arabs. And then Yisrael will take it from the Christians from Edom. With a lawyer, Od Kitru Gadisav. And then there won't be accusations against us for why? Because we are clearly better, we have more schuyot than the Christians. Because most Christians are idol worshippers, they believe in three gods, and they worship Mary and they do all these three gods. What's the Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe? Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe indeed, very good. So they somehow helped us purify this process. And here we see it. God caused it. God is up, up there causing and enabling us to what? Take the land. Take the land. He's organizing it. There's an issue from Shemaim. There's permission from Shemaim to what? There's permission from Shemaim that we actually can take the land. And that's why, in the end, these, all these things happened. Okay? Once the nations of Israel, once the nations of the world, I'm sorry, we, we, we gave us permission, it all fell away. Not only do we believe, like Rashi, that the God is helping us organize this, this Rammer Yechiel Halashtok, who's the father of the one who was murdered in the Holocaust, who what? God even enabled the series of events to happen 
that enables us uh, to have the merits to actually take the land away. And the, the walls of the nations would fall away and we'd be actually able to take the land back. On that note, I'll just... Uh, That's funny.